explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Sith scrubbing. And scrubbing is a method to go through your hardware or your data and see that everything is there. There, So it's a way of doing a health check in order to find errors or problems before they occur. In a Ceph cluster you have placement groups, we call those PGs, and in those placement groups we put objects, and the which objects are in which placement groups is done by a hashing, so the, you have a hashing algorithm that figure out which objects should be put into which placement groups, and that would probably make the placement groups evenly large, but it's not really clear that they will be. Some placement groups will be a little larger, some will be a little smaller. But we are trying to spread the information out over different placement groups. And what we are actually scrubbing are these placement groups. And there are two different kinds of scrubbing. You have the normal scrubbing, which goes through the placement groups, checks that every object in the placement group has the correct size and all the correct metadata. So it's a very shallow search, but it will see that you haven't uh, changed the size or written anything wrong. So it's a way to easily find um, small errors. And then we have the, and this is done pretty much every day. Um, so it's a, a process that does very often. Then we have deep scrubbing, and deep scrubbing goes through every bit on your hard disk and every bit in that specific object and checks the object so the object actually has the right checksum. So we'll go and read all the data and see that it's there and that it's correct. So it will check all your data in your system or in that specific placement group and that's done weekly. So it's something that is scheduled weekly and is running in your Ceph cluster right now. So you can of course change when these things are running depending on the load of your system and so on. So you can have less impact on your performance in your cluster, but it's a very good idea to do this. And what kind of errors can we have on our placement groups now? Well, there is a bunch of them and I'm gonna go through a, a, the most common ones. And these kind of statuses could also occur together. So it's not said that you have one state. Uh, usually you have active clean state on your cluster or all your pages, placement groups. Uh, but uh, what you can have, for instance, is a placement group that is stale. And stale is usually during startup. It's an unknown state. Uh, we can't really use this yet. The OSD has been down or something like that. And then it's a stale state until it becomes active. Then we have down state, and this is something that is down and there is not enough um, data to actually be running dates at all. So usually if you have three copies and you require two of them to be online, then you might only have one copy or no copies available. So that placement group is down and can't be read. And this will block actual read and write. Then we have the inconsistent state, and this is not really good, um, but it's usually when you either have one or more replicas missing, which is where when you have, if you have three copies, then you might only have two copies. So we are doing some repairing here. And in an inconsistent state, you can also have that the objects have the wrong size, and then we will need to, uh, read the object from another system and replace it with the right size. And so this can be repaired and you can be in a state where the system can't really uh, repair it for you and you might be required to do some manual um, work on it. Then we have the unclean state. And this is if you have a page or placement group that has been there for a long time and hasn't recovered. So then it will be an unclean state until it gets recovered. It's not really a bad thing, it's just that it has been non-recovered for a longer time and you can set how long that time is. And then we have inactive. Then then it, some of the OSDs are down, which means that it can't be read or write, written. 
So that is a really bad state as well and you need to go out and see so you actually can get all your data up and running again. And the last but not least is the unfound. And this is the sad state where you have done some data migration and you figured out that some data is not in a state where we can actually run it. Usually this is when you have started something and if you have a state where one system has gone down, you have been writing something in another system and then something else goes down and you go into a state where it's either consistent or you can't really recover these objects, then it can be unfound. We have not enough data to know what this is all about. And what you can do then, uh, you can either mark these as something that you want to delete or if you want you can revert them to an older copy just to get running again. So these are the different things that is interesting to know about the uh, uh, scrubbing and deep scrubbing. So let's jump over to my screen here and we are going to look at some concept. We have a, a string here, I will put that on my webpage as well so you can go in and pick it from there. Uh, and this little statement here well, take all the page placement groups and dump them out, fetch all the active ones and then get uh, column th 21 and do a date stamp on that and sort it and put unique on it. And this will actually give you how many placement groups will be deep scrubbed a specific date. And in this case we see that most of them will be done uh, on Saturday and some on Friday. And having a good spread of this on a real production system is really good because then you won't hit the system on a day when you actually have a lot of traffic. But in my case here I have a cluster at home for backups and doing scrubs on Fridays and Saturdays seems just fine to me. Um, so that's no problem. If you have any problem with any placement groups you will get an error in the a GUI about this or if you are running Ceph um, uh, status detail uh, yeah, perhaps just uh, status so here you can see those kind of problems so you can actually say okay this specific placement group has a problem then you can query that placement group by just saying Ceph PG this name of the placement group and query and then you get all the information about that placement group and you can then or if you have something that is unfound mark it as either revert or delete by running this command down here. Um, another thing that you might not think about when you have a file system is that the file system could be in an inconsistent state as well. We are only talking about objects here. So now we know that all the objects are in place. We know that we have scrubbed down and see that all the bits are in place. But if we have a file system on top, that's another abstraction layer. And we don't know that that file system is okay. So we have another uh, thing there and it's scrubbing the file system. And this is not run automatically. That, this is not a process that it's set up to run at a specific date. It's something that you either have to schedule yourself when you have some downtime or when you don't have that much traffic or you can run it manually. Uh, so to run this, you do this command. You, uh, you can do like this. So Ceph tell MDS Ceph FS, the, that's the name of my Ceph FS and then zero, so the actual root of that. Then do the scrub or the zero mode node and then scrub and start on slash, so the root of my file system and do a recursive scrub. This means that it will start from my root system and scrub all the files and see that all the files objects are available. But it will also go through and look the other way around, a backward scrub, where it will look at the pool and see that all objects are actually uh, available in the file system. And we can run a status 
And now I see that we don't have any active scrubs running. If I run this again, we can see that it's idle. And yeah, so I have scrubbed this recently, so it will not run again because it knows that everything is fine. Uh, but if you run it and you haven't run it recently, it will see how many nodes are left to actually look through in the file system. Uh, another thing you can do is run pause, you can run resume, and you can abort these kind of scrubbings on the file system as well. So if you have a system with high traffic, but you have a downtime where there isn't much traffic around noon, for instance, then you can start your scrubbing one day, pause it after lunch, for instance, and then the next day run it again and so on until you are done with the file system scrubbing. Uh, this can take a while to run. Uh, in our production system, it took a couple of days to run it. But in my home system, it was pretty quick. Uh, so that's another kind of scrubbing. So if you're running all of these different uh, validation checks, you should be pretty sure that you don't have any data rot or any data problems with your drives. But if the case comes that you actually have problems with your hardware, that is something that you will see in the GUI and then you can take action and replace a hard drive or a, t a ho hold host if it's required. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions about file scrubbing or object scrubbing in a Ceph cluster, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you have any other suggestions or comments, leave them there as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and I really hope to see you in the next video.